So this is the main business meeting of the 72nd World Science. Uh, so I have a few slides just to kind of uh, uh, make it easier to convey information to people. Uh, I won't really do anything dynamic on the slides. But uh, anyway, the uh, officers uh, at the head table up here are, uh, I have them back, we have Lisa Hayes, the videographer in the back. Uh, Jesse Pershing, my far right, uh, is the assistant timekeeper. She'll be timekeeper next year. Julie Slake, immediately to my right, is the timekeeper. Linda Denneroff is to my left. She's the one who does all the work. And I'm the presiding officer. So, a few uh, announcements. People should note that the meeting uh, is being recorded. And anybody is free to record or take pictures, unless the meeting specifically votes to prohibit that, which is Rarely, if ever does. Uh, due to the acoustics of the room and other problems, uh, if you just have like a real sh really brief motion that can be easily repeated, you know, you can probably do it from your chair. But if any debate or stuff like that, you really should come to the microphone uh, uh, to stand here and also put you within a view of the, of the video being taken. Uh, hopefully, people have noted the attendance list. Uh, where are the attendance lists currently? Back there, okay, so they should probably wend their way to the front of the room and then uh, we should try to snag the people coming in to get them to uh, note their attendance. Uh, there is the agenda from yesterday and then there's two sheets of paper which are uh, printed, one which is two-sided, one is one-sided, and those two sheets of paper are the reports of the committees that were appointed yesterday to report back today. Um, there are business meeting attendee ribbons there at the head table. You can just come up and get one. They're the same as yesterday. So, I, if you have uh, any sound making devices, uh, you would be good to set them to vibrate or something like that. And um, you know, I'll try to, uh, if it seems necessary, I'll be mentioning uh, things about procedure as we go along. <clears throat> the one thing is that if you, if you want to uh, gain recognition uh, to speak and debate, or to make a motion. Uh, generally speaking, you should stand. I don't know if we have any disabled people here, but that would be a problem. I think not. I don't know if we have any that. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, and, you know, if necessary, say, Mr. Chairman or something to get my attention. But, uh, and in general, you, you, if we don't keep a cue, you cannot gain priority and recognition by standing while the previous person is still speaking. You have to wait until they finish, which is only indicated by them stepping away from the microphone uh, rather than necessarily by them just pausing. Um, so all of our uh, business and constitutional amendment type business we have for today has time limits and uh, the Assembly of its Wisdom has set nice short time limits on some things and longer time limits on others. So, yes? Okay, I uh, reminded, I asked to remind people of the change we made to the standing rules yesterday, which I believe refers to the uh, two changes actually, one of which uh, made uh, objection to consideration require a three quarters vote. However, uh, objection to consideration is not actually in order for any of the business today because this is all stuff which has already been uh, considered and debated, and you can only object to consideration on the initial introduction of a new main motion. Uh, the other is a change to allow the motion postponed indefinitely, uh, which is essentially uh, eliminates a piece of business for the current meeting um, and to provide a uh, lot of performance of debate time to hold for that. However, that change to the standing rules uh, only provided for that motion at the preliminary business meeting, which is not completed. So in fact, those two changes actually have no effect today. Any other parliamentary inquiries? Yeah? Uh, would a motion be in order to uh, reinstate that suspension of the rules at this point? So it would be a motion be in order to do what? So to, to, to So the, the, the rules were suspended, so those 
changes to the standing rules, which normally would not have taken effect until the end of this business meeting, took effect immediately. So they are in effect, it's just that by their terms, they don't actually apply to anything that, that could happen today. So they're in effect, but they don't actually have any effect. <laughs> I mean, it, it, let, let's assume somebody stands up and says, I have a great idea. And uh, they, they have 200 copies so they get written and they bring them up here. And I look at it and I say, wow, that's a great idea. I'll add it to the agenda for today at the end. Then when we got to it, objection to consideration would take three quarters and, you know, and, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, okay, <laughs> any other questions? Okay, moving on here. So. Uh, item 1.1, two-thirds is good enough, part one. Uh, the debate time limit for this, these are constitutional amendments up for ratification. The debate time was set for two minutes. Is there any objection to ratifying this amendment? Yeah. Please, would you please provide context? What, two-thirds of what? Well, since everybody has carefully studied their agenda, I'm sure that I need to provide only a very brief explanation. But uh, this has to do with uh, Hugo eligibility extension and uh, the current rule. Uh, have to, you have to look at your agenda I mean, or the Constitution in the souvenir book. Um, it's section 3.4.3, which is the, uh, I believe that's the, is it, that's the one which permits the business. business. Mr. Chairman, currently under Section 3.4.3, right? That's what the yes. the, uh, if, a work, if a work if a work receives a limited distribution, the business meeting can currently provide by a three-fourths vote to extend its eligibility uh, for another year. This would replace the three-fourths requirement and reduce it to two-thirds. Is there a speech against? Is there any objection to ratifying this amendment to the Constitution? Yes. Okay. Is there any speech against? Any further speeches in favor? We will proceed to a vote. All those in favor of ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and the amendment is ratified. So this will become part of the Constitution, effective as of the end of this world time. 1.2. Two-thirds is good enough, part two. Also a debate time limit of two minutes. There comes a speech in favor. <laughs> Uh, although this may turn out to be moot in the long run, 3.4.2 currently provides that the business may be by a three-fourths vote to provide the works originally published outside the United States and first published in the USA in the current year shall also be eligible. This would also reduce the vote to two-thirds. It is moot if, I believe it is moot if one of the other things... No, no. no? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, this similarly re reduces the requirement from three-fourths to two-thirds on one of the other eligibility rules. Is there a speech against? Is there any objection to approving this unanimously? There is, of course. So, any speeches on either side? We will proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed. Thank you. The ayes have it. The Constitution will be so amended at the end of this world now. Point of information. Okay. Secretary is with Ah, excuse me. Yes. Um, I believe, am I correct that the hero extension resolution and the hero motion that we passed yesterday with Proviso saying that those go away if these two constitutional amendments yes. were passed. That means that there is no more hero committee and that the and that the uh, not yet. Yeah. So, not yet. Because the, 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 still, the question was whether the hero the, these make the extension to the hero committee move and so forth, and I think the answer is not yet, because uh, we need to get to 1.7 before that's true, because uh, there still is an extension mechanism, uh, and just that the vote is, is different, so you could, could still want a committee that would right. make the motion to make the extension, maybe, if you felt like it. So, I believe not. Yes? Can you very nice to make a short announcement to these two members? Certainly, yeah. Uh, Okay. The, the people who have ever heard that, if you just switch, search the internet, <clears throat> source of all knowledge, 
or Whistler's Constitution, you can find the Constitution, which may be convenient for reference. Um, uh, item 1.3, a matter of trust. Uh, this is a debate time set of four minutes. It strikes out uh, a section in the Constitution um, which currently says electronic distribution of publications if offered shall be opt-in. That will just go away, making this uh, discretionary implying the greater trust in World Hunt committees, I believe is the reason for the title. Are there any speeches in favor? Any against? if they don't know that they need to do that. And it's also a, a negligible cost to anybody to have it be, remain as an opt-in so, so that it is equally fair to, to those who do not have electronic access. And I do, I do not think we should adopt this. Speech in favor. <laughs> Warren Buff, having just been involved in the first two progress reports for SAS1, we wound up sending over 500 of PR1 to members who did not wish to receive printed progress reports, many of them overseas. This cost SAS1 on the order of how much was it, about $2,500? That was uh, per PR. That was an unnecessary expense to the Worldcon, which could have been resolved if the Worldcon were given the leeway to solve this in the manner appropriate to it. $2,500. Speech against? My apologies, I was trying to determine whether this is really the only item of business referring to this, which is why I was um, hesitating. Uh, unfortunately, I don't trust Worldcons. Uh, there are many things that Worldcons can manage to grow. Like, for example, being able to turn off the lights in second stage. Uh, as Kent, which apparently cannot happen here if you're more important than anything else. Uh, I'm sorry that Saskon spent $2,500 on having to send out printed publications. They could have made it easier for people to opt in. But for people like Acoustiner for Samo, or Filthy Pierre, I'll take his name in vain, who doesn't have internet access, it'll be much harder for him to get paper publications back if this becomes the default. It is not time for this yet. It is easier for people who have electronic access to fiddle their bits than it is for people without electronic access. Um, we go out of our way to make it easy for people with access issues, and I think this is an access issue, and I think this is a very bad idea. Speech in favor. The effect of this is to remove a micromanagement in the Constitution, binding uh, particular World Cup committees in one very small area. There are many areas in which World Cup committees can screw up. We deal with this on a social level. We deal with this by asking them questions when they're bidding. We deal with this by social feedback mechanisms during the uh, run-up to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> there are many ways in which World Cup can screw up. <laughs> We deal with these socially, we deal with these with the bids by asking them questions and managing positions and at their parties and bid tables. Uh, this is micromanagement in the constitution of one particular small area um, and it's not consistent with the way we do things generally. We should strike this one out and we should deal with these matters in social means the same way we deal with many other matters. Speech again. Uh, by the way, unfortunately, there's only 
10 seconds remaining for speeches against. But, yeah. I originally made the proposal to save money for World Con so they did, could charge people for those printed publications, which was my intent, but do not cut away people who need those printed publications, and I need you. Need. Thank you. Speak. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a problem. That's, that's not a problem in the inquiry. You know, this is up for ratification, so we can't change it very much. Um, speech in favor? Yeah. There's 10 seconds remaining for speeches in favor. Joshua Carnival. I'm pretty sure that we can tell that somebody can't receive electronic uh, publication because they don't have an email address. <laughs> Time has expired for both speeches in favor and against. Uh, we'll proceed to a vote. Um, I guess we'll all, see. all those in favor of ratifying this amendment of the Constitution, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. Does anybody want to count? Okay. Request to count. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do a certain uh, vote here. Those in favor of ratifying this amendment of the Constitution, please stand. Do things slightly differently than we did yesterday because the room is so wide. So what we'll do is we'll go down one side and then up the other side. So it's right. Five. Six. Seven. Eleven.
Hearing none, the amendment is ratified. Next item 1.6 in the zone. The time limit has been set at two minutes for this. This uh, deletes uh, a number of portions of uh, uh, this section 1.8.2 and 1.8.5 in the Constitution. The effect of this is to eliminate the regional residence restrictions on elected members of the Mark Protection Committee. Is there any objection to ratifying this event? Mr. Chairman, I might correct that uh, because this amendment would not take effect at the end of this convention, it would still apply to the election being held here, although I'm aware that it's probably going to be moved. Yes, uh, the, these regional restrictions still would apply for this business meeting, which um, later today will probably elect members to the Mark Protection Committee. Um, any objections to ratification? Yes? Okay. Uh, any speeches in favor of uh, Oregon? Side would like to speak on. Okay, speech in favor. So, wait, wait. so as this convention aptly shows, Worldcon is growing out of just North America. Um, the uh, the idea of separate partitioning for the U.S. is and not separate partitioning for say Europe and Asia and so on is silly and not world in the Worldcon sense. Okay, uh, there's no reason anymore. To, to have these kinds of barriers. We got rid of zoning for site selection for similar reasons. And uh, we should just elect the most competent people to the Park Protection Committee, whoever they happen to be, without restriction to geography. And I suspect that with the growing nature of all kind of demographics, that there won't be a problem of concentration, uh, whatever problem that might cause. I speak to against. Seeing none, any further speeches? Oh, sorry. States. The fact of this would be that it, it 
such works would automatically be eligible on their first publication inside the United States. Um, uh, it says it's five minutes. Uh, is there any objection to ratifying this amendment? Okay, it's ratified. Uh, that concludes the constitutional amendments up for ratification. Sir? For the record, the, the, uh, the, the, I believe that, that that makes some of the things we passed yesterday moot and uh, discharges committees that we continued at that time. Is that correct? I believe that would be a good thing to do. I'm not sure that it does it automatically, but uh, it. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I guess the. Uh, the motion to continue the hero committee uh, specifically stated that if this was ratified, then uh, it would not be continued. So the uh, hero committee will not be continued. And uh, the, uh, this uh, makes the earlier passed constitutional amendment to uh, change this provision from three quarters to two thirds uh, moot because the whole requirement for a vote has gone away. So, it doesn't so, um, so um, basically, one point one, I think, one point two. Okay, the, the one, the one of these two, which which affected section three point four point three of the Constitution. Which would
Jack Thorpe. Um, basically, uh, basically um, a procedure takes three years to change the constitution. Is in my opinion too long. We have to keep it to two years, and therefore uh, a two plus one is vastly inferior to a one plus one solution. Is there a speech in favour of the substitution? Mr. Chairman, I was the appointed chairman of the so-called Arithmetic Committee, and as I swear you're probably aware, I'm also one of the original proponents of the initial proposal. And while I may not be totally thrilled with it, um, I'm not aware, I have yet to see many changes that are so urgent that waiting one more year and making it three years rather than two totally torpedoes its substance. Constitutions are not supposed to be easy to amend. That's a basic feature of them. It's not a bug. <laughs> the key element to me is adding the, the element of uh, ratification by the members. And so if a version that includes the House of Revision element of the second year's business meeting is seen as the best way forward, I think we should go with that. The key factor is the ratification by the members. And so I uh, encourage the members to adopt this substitute as more generally palatable is there a speech against the substitution? Uh, I think that's a feature of the original proposal. 
Uh, and if we consider the, the uh, 2 plus 1 system in spite of its merits, uh, it, it loses that feature of the original motion. Speech in favor of the Mr. Chairman, move to call the vote. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved and seconded to call the question. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. Now vote on the call of the question. All those in favor of calling the question in the event of a substitution. Thank you. All those opposed? There being more than two-thirds in favor, the question is called. We'll now get to vote on the amendment by substitution. All those in favor of substituting the committee report version, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those uh, opposed? Okay, the ayes have it, and the committee reported version 2 plus 1 is substituted for the original proposed constitutional amendment. So the committee report version is now on the floor. Um, and, uh, yes? Sure. Yes, that does. Uh, we're at 115 seconds for 130 seconds against, so just about two minutes have been used up for each side of the 20. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to round that to, to 20 minutes total debate time at this point. Sure. Is there any, any objection to that? Yeah, a speech in favor of the, uh... Mr. Chairman, as I said earlier, I am, a, I was a proponent of the original motion, and I, uh, I did prefer it, but I would kind of live with this, I think. The key element to me is that there are thousands, thousands of members of WSPAS who cannot attend a business meeting. There are over 2,000 supporting members of this convention. This Worldcon is the largest Worldcon ever held, and a quarter of our members even if you know, they can't physically attend the meeting. Now, I'm not in favor of remote participation or proxies of any sort. I believe participation is good. And, but I still believe that the entire membership of the convention, the thousands of dues-paying members who cannot attend but want to participate in some way, should have a voice in our affairs. Not an exclusive voice, but they should have a voice in it. I am sensitive to the criticisms of WSPAS that the governance of this organization is solely vested in the hands of about 200 people who, are the, who show up and throw away most of their work time, it would seem. Uh, just speaking from personal experience of this. Um, and I'm sensitive to the criticisms that there is absolutely no way for all of these other members to have much to do with it. I'm not saying it's going to bring the millennium, but I also believe it would have an effect. It would also derail a rather, in my opinion, legitimate criticism of our process. Now, I was until last year a citizen of a state that has something of a, a rather wild ride of uh, popular democracy, uh, California. Uh, but nevertheless, in our state, when I was a resident, a citizen of it for 47 years, the general form of amending our state constitution was for our legislature to adopt uh, constitutional amendments by a supermajority, and then everything got submitted to the voters of the state who then had to ratify it at a general election. I see nothing wrong with us adopting something similar for, the, for our organization. I don't think it does any harm. I also think it does some positive good, and therefore I encourage the members to vote in favor of this constitutional amendment and enfranchise a significant portion of the members of our organization. Thank you. Speech against. I agree that it's laudable to enfranchise a significant portion of our uh, organization, but I don't think this is the right way to do it. We don't need to make amendments harder um, to pass. We're all, it's already fairly slow to pass them. One. Um, and two, um, the uh, we don't need to put trivial uh, bookkeeping changes to our constitution. Stuff like two-thirds is good enough, or um, a matter of trust. Well, a matter of trust is pretty good. Um, or the Whispers Accountability Act of 2013. We don't need to spend effort being politicians, educating the populace, or our populace, on these things. We only need to put contentious things before them, and this doesn't do this. It's going to waste everybody's time. Uh, speech in favor.
fish and flavor, they are very, very tempery. I, I would question that uh, we as a group are actually able to identify what will be a contentious issue before it explodes. <laughs> Speech again.
is one of the most important things we can do to move forward as, as a society. Thank you. Speech and games. Tim Sager. Um, my <clears throat> objection to this motion is based upon information. Basically, we who attend the meeting get to hear the debate about each motion. And if we throw it out to um, the rest of the membership, they will get maybe um, some written documentation which they may or may not read. But I think that there's careful consideration at the meeting and what's going to happen out, outside of the meeting, who knows, you know, the, some people will just check in or they will ignore it or whatever, you know. So I think for a, a more considered um, result, we should just um, maintain the status quo. I do it. 